Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. My Living Doll is an American science fiction sitcom that only aired for 26 episodes on CBS. It started on September 27, 1964 and ran to March 17, 1965. And it's probably one of those sitcoms that you just don't remember, but that's a shame. This is a really good program, and it's quite fun to watch. There's some real reasons why it didn't make it in the television world at that time, and we'll look at them in just a bit. It was produced by Jack Shertock and was filmed at Desilu Studios. The series was unusual in the fact that it was bought by the network without a formal pilot. All this at the request of CBS's president, James T. Aubrey. And that was all due to the success of Shertock's previous series, My Favorite Martian. It starred Bob Cummings as Dr. Bob McDonald, who's a psychiatrist who is given care of Rhoda Miller, a lifelike android that's played by Julie Newmar. She's been given the form of a sexy Amazonian female by her creator. Rhoda's real name is AF-709, and she's a prototype robot that Dr. Carl Miller, played by Henry Beckman, built for the U.S. Air Force. Through a series of mishaps, she ends up in the care of Dr. Miller's friend, Air Force psychiatrist Bob McDonald. All this happening quickly when Miller is transferred to Pakistan. Bob is initially reluctant, but he soon becomes intrigued by the experiment of educating this sophisticated but really naive robot. His initial goal is to teach Rhoda how to be a perfect woman, which he defines at the time as one who does as she's told and doesn't talk back. He also strives to keep her identity secret. Many of the show's episodes deal with Rhoda learning how human society works. She also begins showing, or at least emulating, emotions as the series progresses. An example of this is in the episode called The Kleptomaniac, where she displays a childlike, playful attitude. At one point, the doctor notices this, and he utters, what a goofy robot, to which Rhoda replies, the goofiest. At the conclusion of this episode, she giggles without prompting, after pulling a plot-solving prank on another character. The series doesn't really explore whether these are truly learned behaviors or the result of programming or if in the fantasy context of the series, she is truly learning human emotion. Now, Bob Cummins and Julie Newmar are the main characters in the show, but there are some other regular cast members that play important parts in the series. There's Jack Mullaney. He plays Peter Robinson, who's a colleague and neighbor of Bob's, who decides that Rhoda is the girl of his dreams. He's a regular supporting character in episodes 1 through 20. And then he learns the truth in the fifth to last episode after Bob is transferred to Pakistan. As of episode 21, he becomes Rhoda's guardian and series co-lead. Then there's Doris Dowling. She plays Irene Adams, Bob's sister, whom he asked to move in as a housekeeper and chaperone to keep his neighbors from thinking that something inappropriate is going on between Rhoda and him. She ended up being dropped from the cast when Bob was transferred to Pakistan. You also might remember her as an actress who played a rich lady, or supposedly rich lady, on The Andy Griffith Show, where she corresponds with Floyd the Barber and they exchange lies with each other about their extravagant lifestyles. That episode is called Floyd the Gay Deceiver. CBS had been looking for some kind of vehicle for Julie Newmar for over two years, and they felt like this was really the spot she ought to be. 
The show was announced in April of 1964, and filming started in July of that same year. Newmar has always felt that Bob Cummings was not the person to play this role as the doctor. It just wasn't the proper vehicle for him. And I pretty much agree with her. They needed a different type of actor. Originally, they wanted Ephraim Zimblis Jr. because it really wasn't a flippant part. It needed a straight actor who could play opposite this bizarre creature so that the comedy would come off well. That quality was lost when they hired Bob Cummings. Newmar felt that the show would have been just wonderful and that it would have probably run for many seasons had it not been cast this way. The reviews for the series were really good and it was called a popular novelty hit with Miss Newmar giving amusing performances as this robot. But the ratings just weren't good. The show was initially scheduled opposite NBC's Bonanza on Sunday nights. But it was then shifted in December in an attempt to improve the ratings. This didn't work. And in January, Cummings was written out of the show after 21 episodes. CBS didn't announce a replacement for him, indicating that they just didn't want to continue with the series. Had the stars aligned just a little bit differently, I think this show would have been a big hit. It's said that Cummings and Newmar weren't getting along during the production. Cummings was unhappy that Newmar appeared to be getting more press attention than he was. In later years, Newmar states that the trouble was really the fact that Cummings had an addiction to amphetamines and it contributed to to his erratic behavior on the set, as well as his increasing depression and insecurity. He demanded that the show focus more on his character. CBS refused to do this, and he left. His last appearance was in an episode called The Witness, which aired February 10, 1965. The following week's episode explained that his character had been transferred to Pakistan. The Peter character learns Rhoda's secret and takes over the position of watching over her, which is the plot device for the last five episodes of that first season. The series was not renewed for a second season. This great show put Julie Newmar front and center on our television screens and introduced us to her. She would go on to become more fixed in our minds as she played the role of Catwoman in Batman. Take a look back at this great, often overlooked sitcom from the 60s. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.